For today's project, we are going to be mechanical engineers to build a slingshot car. Our car uses elastic and kinetic energy to launch itself across the room. But before we can start building our project, let's make sure we have all of our materials ready. Now that we know what we're building, let's make sure that we have all of our materials ready. Inside of our project bag, we should have a plastic or a paper straw, two metal axle rods, which should be two millimeter stainless steel rods, one medium rubber band, eight small popsicle sticks, four plastic wheels, four pipe cleaners, and four, optionally up to eight, double-sided squares. Outside of our project bag, we will also need a pair of scissors, a pen or a pencil, some tape, as well as one blueprint worksheet. Once you have all of your materials ready, we can start building our project. We will start by making a blueprint to plan out what we want our slingshot car to look like. We want to start off with some basic foundation and using two popsicle sticks and straws and it should mainly look like this. Two popsicle sticks and pieces of our straw going between them. with our wheels on the outside. Everybody's car will more or less look similar to this design on the bottom, but from here you can be creative and design whatever car that you can think of. For this step, make sure that your students are mindful of the materials that are available when designing the rest of their car. I will design the side of my car like this. You can also encourage your students to mark which pieces of their car are made of what material so that you can tell what they're building at a glance. Once we've done our blueprint, we're ready to start building our design. Now that we're done designing, we are ready to build. Let's start by taking our straw if it's in a paper wrapping, you can simply remove that. And we're going to cut it about in half with our scissors. This cut doesn't have to be exact, however. Next, we will take one metal rod and insert it into one of our straw halves. Make sure that you have parts of the metal rod sticking out from both ends of the straw. If you don't, as I don't here, you can shorten the straw a little bit and discard the excess. And then make sure that you can see parts of the metal rod out of each end. And repeat this step with the other straw half. So as you can see, this one will need to be shortened, so I'll make it about the same length as my other half here. and then insert the metal rods into both of the halves. Next, we're going to insert one end of the metal rod on one of these assemblies into a wheel. When you do this, make sure that the straw is surrounding the metal rod. And if you find it difficult to insert the rod into the wheel, you can try sandwiching the wheels around the metal rod uh, like this and there should be a little hole inside of the wheel that you can place the end of the metal rod into. Hold it vertically and take another wheel, placing it on top. Carefully press the wheels together with the rod in between until they're fully attached, like so. 
and then repeat, repeat this process with the other wheels and the other metal rod and straw. Make sure your students understand that the straw should be around the rod as you do this because you won't be able to add it later without taking it apart. Test out both of these rods once you've done this by holding just the straw and ensuring that the wheels are able to spin freely. If they don't spin easily, you can remove the wheel by just pulling and then cut the straw down so that the wheels are able to spin freely. Now that we have two axles for our car, we are going to use double-sided squares to attach two popsicle sticks to the top of the straws. We want to sort of space them out on these axles as much as possible and do so carefully to form a kind of hashtag shape just as we drew it in our blueprint earlier. So I'll do that now with some double-sided squares. It's easiest to place them onto the popsicle stick first, remove the backing, and then place and fold them around the straw. It's important to make sure as well that the double-sided tape doesn't contact the wheel as this could prevent it from spinning. I'll attach this same popsicle stick to the other axle. Then I'll repeat this process with the other popsicle stick. When you're done, it should look like this. And lastly, we will need to attach our rubber band to the front of the car by tying it to one of our straw pieces. If you need help tying it, one way to do it is to place the rubber band under the straw, like so, grabbing each side and pulling up. You should have two loops, kind of like you're tying your shoes. And we're going to pull this back loop, which is inside of the middle of the car, through the inside of the other loop in the front. And then we're going to pull it tight around our straw. You can then tape it in place if you want so that it doesn't come undone. Um, if students are struggling with this, they can also directly tape the rubber band to this front straw, although that will be less, less secure. Now that we're done building our basic foundation of the car, which will be similar for all students, we're going to use our pipe cleaners and any remaining popsicle sticks to design the body of the car that we designed in our blueprint. So I'll go ahead and do that here. You can bend and cut the pipe cleaners into any shape that you like. But I do like to encourage students not to cut the popsicle sticks as they could splinter and injure someone. Remind your students that when they are taping things on, they should make sure that the tape is not coming in contact with the wheels as it could prevent them from spinning when we test our design. You'll also want to make sure that that rubber band at the front is able to move and stretch, which we will use for launching the car in a minute. This here is my very simple design, but you can in uh, encourage your students to get creative with this to build the type of car that they like. To help us launch our car, we're going to build a super simple la launching station on the desk we are working on. You can also build this on the floor, and you can have students build this for their own launcher, for their table group, or you can build multiples for students to race for the whole classroom. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pencil and lay it on a flat surface like the table, 
and we're simply going to take some strips of tape and secure the pencil to the table. Make sure that the tip of the pencil as well as the eraser side of the pencil are open as we can use those to launch. You can also add tape to the sides of these pieces here to secure it in place better since students like to pull pretty hard when launching their cars so that the pencil does not come flying off. This will be the foundation of our launcher, which we'll use in the testing portion. Now let's test our slingshot car. To test, all we have to do is take our rubber band, put it over either end of the pencil, stretch it back, and release it to see it launch. Give the students time to improve their design if needed. If their axles are falling off or moving around, you can add some masking tape on top of the double-sided tape uh, to keep it secure. If the rubber band slips off, you can try tying it better or taping it in place so that it doesn't fall. And if you want to improve the body or use any of the extra supplies, students can also do that. Now that we have a working slingshot car, let's talk about how it works. Our project works by turning potential energy that's stored in the rubber band into kinetic energy when we release it. When we pull back on the rubber band, we're giving it potential energy, uh, which is potential to move or launch. But when we let it go, we see that the energy is converted into kinetic energy as it shoots out and flies. This potential energy is also known as elastic energy because it is uh, energy that is stored in stretching or compressing of the rubber band. When we stretch the rubber band, it wants to go back to its original state, so it uses that energy to jump back where it wants to be, launching the car forward. Some things to think about and ask your students uh, after you're done building are, what do you think would happen if the wheels are not aligned with one another? Does it matter what surface we launch our car on? How can we make the slingshot car go further? And how else can we improve our design? The design of the car might depend on what it's going to be used for as well. If you want a car to transport things, you might need to build a lot of space on the inside for materials. If you want to be able to crash into things without falling apart, you might want to add some bumpers or something to help withstand the crash. If you want it to be fast, you also might want to minimize the design to make it as small and light as possible, like a sports car.